So it's an honor to be here, and as Basque, as uh, John told, uh, it's, it, feel, it makes me feel very proud to see how bo uh, educa uh, vocational education and training is a reference all over the world. And uh, I want to tell you here about my journey. It started 15 years ago when I was studying in the University of Mondragon. And I get in touch with Digital Twins and uh, actually the last six, seven years, I had the opportunity to develop the software Simomatic 3D that has been used in education and I was able to do, carry out a lot of research with big companies and small companies, companies and see how we can use these digital twins to do very amazing things. And I will tell you about that. So. Uh, first of all, if you attended yesterday, you probably understood that we are in this uh, fourth industrial revolution, many challenges we are facing. And if you talk to the industrial companies, they will tell you that m the main challenge probably is the time to market. It has changed how fast products come to the market. And that means that companies need to design, implement, and deliver new models, new products, using new, te new technology faster and faster. And this makes that uh, production systems need to be more flexible to be able to develop new technologies and new products, but even requires that the production system need to be implemented faster. So if we look out to our cell phones, for example, we are used to change cell phones almost every year now. And even if we go to the automotive, well, uh, cars are introducing this new technology and it's making the automotive companies, for, uh, it's forcing actually them to uh, deliver or produce new models faster and faster. We don't have these uh, uh, car models that are lasting for five, six, seven years. Now they, they are forced to uh, deliver new models every second, third year. And this makes that their production plans need to be more flexible. So, uh, digital twins. What are digital twins? If we will put together here uh, different researchers, they will probably have different point of view of what actually a digital twin is. It's a quite uh, new term, but uh, if we look to, or if we think about five, six years ago, digital twins are basically computer-based models. So it's a piece of software that you can run in a computer and it will represent different aspects of a system. Uh, I'm focusing mostly in industrial systems, so it will represent the geometry or physics, kinematics of this system and will allow us to carry out different experiments so we can predict how this system will react uh, in different circumstances. So let's see, we can see the video. No? Okay, so we don't, doesn't matter. Uh, this is how a digital twin could look like. So in the right part, we have the digital twin or a model of a robot cell, and uh, it will represent, it would look to automatic system, it will represent the sensors, actuators, and all the components that we have in that uh, automated system. And the kind of digital twins I'm working with or I experience it with it are the ones that are connected to the automated control system. So uh, nowadays, even if uh, 3D manufacturing is changing how we are producing things, we still need to do some programming. We need to automatize systems. We don't have that magic button that makes a complete uh, process or manufacturing system built by itself. Maybe in some years, machines will be able to create their own machines, but still, uh, we need to build, put together these new technologies, components, and we need to program them. So the one, the, the kind of uh, digital things I'm working with are the ones that model these components, this equipment, and we can use them to connect to the control system the systems that engineers, technicians program so we can test how they perform uh, in different situations. And that brings us to concept which is very used nowadays and very popular, which is virtual commission. So if we look to the uh, 
uh, uh, top part, uh, we see the different steps through, uh, in a engineering project or in a uh, automated system project. So everything starts with some requirements uh, of a customer. We need to do the design. We need to do some engineering activities, and then we need to build actually a system. Okay. And then it brings it bring us to the most critical part of all this, which is the commissioning. Uh, I used to give that example that once I was in a uh, commissioning that took over nine months. So the commissioning, if you talk to the industry, is the most critical part because it's when everything, all the work we have done, all the designing and engineering activities we have done, they are put together and it's when you try to make this automated system work. And if you have done any mistake in the previous activities, you will see that in that step. And that's why it's very difficult to estimate how long the uh, commissioning is going to take. So that's why virtual commissioning, the concept of virtual commissioning came many years ago, actually, it's quite old. But it's actually based on, okay, why we should wait until the real system is built to test it and put it together and see if we have done any mistake and not create a model that we can use even before the real system is constructed and see how it performs and if we can optimize it. So virtual commissioning is basically using a digital twin to carry out the commissioning so we can reduce the commissioning and hopefully reduce the delivery time, which is what the industry wants actually now. And as I mentioned before, what we are trying to replace is the real system. So we have these control systems that engineers need to program to make things work automatically, which are connected to the real system, and we replace the real system by the virtual system. And then the programmers can work programming and commissioning their systems in their office instead of the, on the plant. And if you look to the actual research, and actually Germany is uh, uh, very impressive in the advantages they are, do advances they are doing in this area. Uh, the goal nowadays is to try to use these virtual models for many other things, not just for the commissioning. We have been hearing about uh, training. We are uh, hearing more and more that to use uh, to make optimization of uh, production plants. So we, we can start using these digital models since the very beginning. Actually, we could start creating the models once we start with the design. We can use them in different activities. And uh, the last years I've been doing research and see how we can, of course, improve the delivery time of uh, new projects or new developments, but we can also use it in something called retrofitting which is quite interesting now when we are so focused in sustainability. And it basically means that you take an old machine and you want to give it a new life. You want to enlarge the life of this machine. So if we uh, to take, can take a certain example, a uh, cell phone, imagine you can just replace the CPU on the screen of your cell phone, but just keep the rest and give it a new life instead of buying a new one. So with this is basically something that many uh, companies are trying to do because this new industry 4.0 is asking for more connectivity and may, they may have machines that work perfectly, but they lack these features. So they want to do some uh, upgrades. We could call it like upgrades. And the problem is that these machines are working probably 24 seven and you don't want to stop production to be able to implement these upgrades. So being able to use the digital twin and do the modifications in the digital twin in parallel to the production provides you the opportunity to reduce the implementation time amazingly. So we maybe half time or even less. Then because these flexibility uh, requirements, many companies need to implement new variants of the products in the production lines. And Usually it's the customer themselves, they need to do this implementation. So being able to work in parallel to the production with the digital twin and see how they could use the existing uh, machines or the existing plants 
to produce even new variants of their products is something that is uh, very interesting. And finally, operator training. We know that uh, industry requires more and more skilled people being able to use the digital twins to train the operators instead of waiting until something bad happens. You can reproduce all these failed situations and train them much more effectively. So this is a really nice thing. Uh, yes. And uh, yesterday, uh, it was very interesting because uh, I, I found these um, titles in a newspaper in Sweden two weeks ago, but yesterday we could hear that it's a common problem. Uh, industry lacks skill on uh, skilled professionals, and uh, actually this will be probably the main reason that will delay or can uh, slow down the development of uh, the technology or the implementation of the technology. And that's why I really like to work in the university and use digital twins for education. And I'm going to shortly tell you about my experience. So, because Simomatic or my project was, I realized later, but it was the only free software in the market. I was using it for research myself and I was use it, uh, using it in my courses. But uh, suddenly, because you know YouTube and all this uh, stuff, people get to know, and I realized that other universities and other educational institutions were using it. And uh, it was very interesting to work together with other institutions and see what uh, the potential of this is. And uh, if you look to a traditional lab in a university or a vocational education institution, you see something like in the picture. So it's just a physical lab where you have, this is the typical water tank project where the students need to adjust the level of the tank and program it and see how it works. And they usually learn some basic programming skills and work in this physical lab, but they are quite limited. And instead, if we use digital twins, we open the door for many, many different options. So we allow the students to work in parallel. We, they are not forced to share this physical lab. They can have their own uh, virtual lab in their computer. And they can even join distance courses. So we cannot send physical labs to distance courses, to massive online courses. But we can send them a program so they can uh, play, play with it. And uh, the most interesting of all, they, we open the door for creativity. So actually, students can create their own labs. And this is something that is uh, really fun. So this is just one experiment we did in the University of Mondragon. We took the real lab and we created a copy. And uh, it was very fun to see that the students actually learn more and can get deeper understanding of the problem because they have more access to the uh, lab. Yeah. And this is uh, just the last slide. Uh, the last two years, after all the experience I had uh, in education, I tried to introduce the project-based learning using digital twins and not just focus in the developing programming skills. As I showed uh, before, we have all these uh, different phases where the students need to, or where the engineers and technicians need to be skilled on, and just programming is one activity in all of that. But if we can provide them a tool so they can start designing their own solution and they can see how different group of students can come up with different solutions for the same, same problem, they can compare, you can discuss, we can get a better understanding on, of uh, what you are actually doing. And uh, that's all for my part. Yeah? So thank you very much. <laughs>